11 videos back I made one called Chip Shortage, dealing with using old parts hanging around to make equipment, and specifically using 4807s in parallel to get reasonable power from a transmitter. With the worldwide chip shortage, we have to make do with 75-year-old vacuum chips. Well, there's the 813 compared to 4807s, and we'll see how applicable they are to, if you've got these things hanging around, if you want to get 100 watts, 120 watts out. Um, what's easier to use, an 807 or a 4807 or a single 813? You've got less holes to drill, that's one thing, but it's a bigger one. Made by AWA. Oh, this one was made just in time to miss out on the excitement of the war. Some had ceramic bases that were meant to be better. Made by various brands. Well, they do light up impressively. The thing about the 813 is it's a 10 volt 5 amp filament, uh, directly heated, so you've got to worry about hum and uh, balancing it and stuff, which you don't have to do with an 8, 807 because it's uh, independently, uh, it's a indirectly heated filament and you can do what you like with it. Um, so you need a big transformer. Now, I have in the past use these downlight transformers. Now these are terrible things. They were stuck in people's roofs heating up, no wonder the fires and stuff. Um, they're so inefficient when they're not running anything at all they get stinking hot and with 50 watts running for a few hours you, you can't touch them. They're the terrible things and terribly inefficient. So um, we're not using any of those things. And also, if you use a uh, 12 volt or 13 volt transformer, that means you've got to uh, get rid of a couple of uh, volts at 5 amps, so you know, 20, 15 watts or something. It's not a trivial matter, and it means you can have a hot resistor somewhere bubbling away and wasting power. An 813 has 125 watt uh, plate dissipation, and uh, at 2,000, 2,500 volts, you can get um, 375 watts out of them, um, probably maximum ratings, and 1600 volts, apparently 175 watts. So uh, that's what it is, and the filament, as I said, uh, is uh, 10 volts at 5 amperes. That's a square plate, that one. There's a usual uh, shape plates. And an 807 has 30 watts plate dissipation, so if you've got four of them, 120 watts, so not much less than the 813, although at uh, 750 volts maximum ratings you can get maybe 50 watts out of one. It's really pushing it, more likely 50 watts or something, or 45 watts at uh, 600 volts or something. So still you'll get, um, you, know, you get over 100 watts, 120, 150 watts maybe. Uh, theoretically you get uh, 200 watts at 750 volts, but I think that might be pushing them. So four, um, yeah, they're not going to get 375 watts, that's for sure. But um, they're sort of a magic, magic tube. I found them more reliable on 813s. So the filaments often go open on 813s. But uh, I've never had that happen on an 807. And there's millions more in the world of 807s and 813s. There were, these things were just popped out of, <laughs> uh, out of factories like you wouldn't believe in the 40s and 50s. The filament supply for an 807 is 0.9 amps at 6.3 volts, so four of them, it works out to about 22.6 watts. The 813 is 5 amps at 10 volts, so almost twice as much as four 807s, uh, so probably not as efficient in that respect running these sort of powers. So this is certainly made out of a hodgepodge of equipment. Um, there's the filter choke, uh, filter condensers there, or capacitors, <laughs> electrolytics, um, a power supply there, a little transformer for the uh, grid bias, um, the plate coil, a uh, big transformer. Um, had to work out, get the right voltage. Um, so uh, that's all there. And that's more of the, uh, the grid supply. 
a little rectifier built on top of the electrolytic there. If I turn on the HT, so about 120 watts or something, so it's loafing along there, and uh, it should be uh, fairly foolproof or fail safe, I should say. There's protective bias, so if the uh, the drive goes, and it just uh, <coughs> goes to zero current basically. And the screen current there, taking about 20 milliamps. There's a, I think it's 30 watts uh, dissipation on the screen for these. Supposedly a maximum of uh, 400 volts. You can get more out of them at low voltage if uh, you push the screen, but I don't know if it's advisable. Now if we turn the high tension on, Yes, yeah, taking about uh, 750 watts, about 750 volts, which is not nice. You wouldn't want to get across it, but I think it's not healthier than 1600 or 2000. And often people run 807s at 700 volts, so uh, it's not too bad. And I don't think the 813 would be too worried about that since its maximum rating is 2500 volt automatics. A bleed resistor there to uh, reduce the voltage when you turn it off so don't get a zap later on. One thing about if you go much over 100 watts you, you end up having problems with um, you need, need big transmitting um, tuning conductors and everything it's it's tuning uh, capacitors it gets a very messy and need something a bit bigger like bigger transformer than that um, so I had to use this auto transformer and uh, try and adjust the voltage of the um, the taps on this to, to get just the right thing, get about 120 watts. I could get 200 watts, but it was really too much. <laughs> it was drawing too much power and the transformer was getting hot. And uh, these were zapping over. So I, I, I had to uh, do some things to reduce that a little bit. Of course, this is just the power output stage, the final stage. Um, I'm using a Codan linear amplifier uh, to uh, give me uh, a few watts out. Well, these are capable of 100 watts of SSB uh, or 100 watts carrier actually. They're pretty good devices, but a few watts out to drive the uh, the, 80, the 813. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's driving the RF drive and the audio drive for the modulator. I've got, as usual, a, a, a power a, a public address amplifier. These are really great things. I think it's 120 watts and I'm feeding a 100 volt line output into a power transformer. So uh, yeah, that goes to the uh, 100 volt line of the PA amplifier. And I'm using the 240 volt output as the secondary to uh, via a, a capacitor, uh, it's icing modulation sort of thing, to isolate the DC and the DC is going through a an inductor, a big uh, choke there, and uh, that uh, modulates the valvey, and it, it works very well indeed. So if you don't have uh, a proper modulation transformer, most mains transformers work quite well. Um, there's nothing wrong with them if you can get the right impedances. Um, but this one's, you know, uh, obviously it's okay at 50 hertz, and a couple of dB down at 10k. I mean, it's not nothing to worry about. That they're really quite good. And an easy way out if you haven't got a UM3 or another sort of uh, proper modulation transformer. Now we'll look at the modulation, and uh, that's putting out 120 watts. Oh, look at that, that's pretty good, isn't it? Plenty in reserve. Can certainly over modulate, which is what you want. That's at uh, 400 hertz. Now it's uh, designed to work from 160 meters up to 5 megs, so if I ever get my <laughs> HF licenses, broadcasting licenses, we can press it into service. Now this is why I like to have a look at the actual raw output carrier wave, and it's looking quite good there, but if you detune it, or you've got your LC ratios all wrong, you can get the, it all goes distorted, and you're getting a second harmonic, almost as strong as the main signal, and you may be getting you know good results or big antenna current but um, 
a lot of it's coming out of the wrong frequency, which is going to cause harmonics, which you have to filter out. Or if you don't do that, uh, of course, it's going to uh, interfere um, up the dial somewhat. So, uh, yeah, often you look at a transmitter and think it's working okay, and the output's like that. So uh, you've got uh, second harmonic, probably third, fourth, and everything else. So uh, seeing is believing, isn't it? Just turning into a harmonic. I find it quite fascinating. Actually, look at that. It's going... Brrr, turning into... Uh, it's doubling, as Henry would say, doubling and tripling in the 807s. Oh, yes, quadrupling in the 807. <laughs> yes, they'll do it too. They just achieve the will. The AC May would be proud. But if it's like that, they'd come knock, knock, knocking on your door. Now, obviously, if I was going to uh, seriously be on the air, I'd invest in a Class D <laughs> solid-state transmitter uh, just for uh, efficiency of power usage and other things. But it'd be good to have standby transmitters. You never know when you might need them. But as, as you can see, this is quite simple. Just having one valvey, you just got... Uh, it, it's not much in it at all. Yeah, so quite simple underneath, isn't it? Um, basically, uh, they're the filaments and uh, they're bypassed to earth for RF, uh, for the cathode and everything. And uh, what else have we got? We've got the... Um, there's the grid uh, comes in there at 50 ohms, the little tuning thing there and uh, capacitor that feeds the grid uh, blocking for the DC. And there's a choke, the, um, the minus 80 volts um, for the... DC grid bias goes through that choke to the grid pin there and uh, that must be the screen there I think yes you got screen voltage uh, and that's bypassed to earth there the screen goes to via a meter and uh, these are the screen resistors here drop the um, the 750 volts to about 400 volts via these uh, resistors here um, hopefully they don't get too hot um, so there we are. The, that's the um, the high voltage diode um, stack for the rectum fires. And <laughs> that's an important thing. This is a choke straight across the antenna connector. Um, the idea here is, here is if one of the um, coupling capacitors to the top of the valve, uh, if that went short circuit you would get uh, the full HT on the antenna connector so what happens um, the antenna connector for DC is effectively earth if that happened it would just blow the fuses and the DC supply and it would turn off or just go off but of course that's um, transparent to RF so it doesn't affect the uh, the RF signal a little bit of a safety feature there um, that's the bleeder resistor so uh, you can turn off the, the set and the, 20 seconds or so, all the HT is dissipated. So that's really all it is. Um, most of the other stuff is just DC switching fuses. I tend to use um, slow blow fuses, so you can have a, a fuse that's pretty close to the rating, and uh, but it won't pop when you turn on surge. But um, uh, they're a little bit, a little bit more expensive, but they're certainly worthwhile in that respect. So you don't have a fuse that doesn't pop and things start to melt. So you just feed 50 ohms in there. And I have another output there, an RF monitoring to feed a crow or an, a, uh, a modulation monitor, which is the only way to go if you want to hear what, what it really sounds like. That's a little uh, capacitor there to uh, tap off some of the signal for the monitor output. Well, certainly... Um seems to work okay. So just to compare it to one of the uh, 807 transmitters I've built recently because one war economy standard just stick any meters in that might work um, so it looks a bit uh, well it looks quite good actually <laughs> quite old worldish. Yeah that's the layout of the 807 transmitter that's to well, was, was going to be totally self-contained with a power transformer a mod tranny, tranny was going in there but um, it was too small and got hot, so I've had to have an external uh, mod transformer. But apart from that, that's quite a nice, um, reasonably portable 120 watt transmitter. The thing is, the Singer synthesizer <laughs> that goes up to two gigs actually is uh, actually bigger than the transmitter. But that's the way it is.
Well, should you use 813s or 807s? I don't think it matters. If uh, you've got lots of 807s, use them. If you've got 813s, they're OK too. I mean, they've got pros and cons for both of them. Um, the sockets for the 813s are a bit hard to get, but uh, I guess you can find them if you look hard enough. Uh, I think there's far more 807s in the world than 8 813s. Um, you often pick them up for 50 cents somewhere and uh, the millions made, billions, <laughs> they seem to be everywhere. And uh, 813s are a bit more expensive, people like to use them for uh, linear amplifiers and stuff. So you might be paying a premium price, but then one valve compared to two, uh, four. So uh, it's your choice really, not that anyone's interested in making any of these things at all. They go and build a Class D or something, or buy something off the shelf. Uh, just I've got a lot of stuff here, might as well use it. So uh, there we are, um, mainly just to show you what, what you can do with junk. And it works okay as well, really good. Okay, see you next time.